teach you a lesson that you'll never forget. How can we fight fear? Everybody is afraid of something. Even the people we admire in the Bible felt fear. In Luke, the shepherds were afraid when an angel came to tell them about the birth of Jesus. In Mark, while Jesus slept, Jesus' disciples were afraid when a powerful storm almost sunk their ship. The book of John says, Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. But what are some ways we can do this? When we are afraid, we should go to God in prayer and tell Him all about it. We can ask Him for strength and courage. Just talking to God about your fears can increase your faith and make you feel stronger. We can study the brave characters in the Bible and try to be like them. Try reading about Joshua, Caleb, Esther, Gideon, and the Apostle Paul. Can you think of more people from the Bible who trusted in God and overcame their fears? We can learn from their good examples. If we feel nervous about something, we can also talk to someone we trust who can give us good advice. Sharing our fears with others can make them seem small. Do you like to sing? Singing hymns or other church songs is a way to feel less afraid and closer to God. How about counting your blessings? 
Focusing on the good, positive things God has given us can take away fear and show us that things might not be as bad as they seem. Lastly, remember that we can always rely on God to help overcome our fears. If our faith is strong, our fears become weak. So how can we fight our fears? By praying, talking to someone we trust, singing uplifting songs, counting our blessings, and increasing our faith and trust in God. Morning, 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 morning! Hello kids, how are you this morning? Wasn't that a great way to start off? Um, kids Church online this morning and what a great YouTube clip to introduce our theme this morning about how can we fight fear and how can we trust in God. So let's kick off this morning with a little Kitchen Chaos. I've missed Kitchen Chaos and I think it's going to get us in the mood of love because it is Valentine's Day um, and I know that Alistair's got a great bake um, all to do with Valentine's Day. So Alistair, what are you doing for us this morning? Hello again. It's been a long time this lockdown, hasn't it? And and yes, I've grown a thing on my head because I've become an alien. I'm living in Wales now. Um, hopefully we'll get back to Merseyside in due course. Now then, Valentine's Day. A day when uh, we remember a guy called St. Valentine, who loved everybody else, who did good. And because he was a very good man, he gets a day a year to remember things. Now, we learn that God is love. And that if we love God, we must love other people. Every day, not once a year. So let's celebrate every day, Valentine's Day. And, um, we're going to make Valentine's Florentines. So, what you need? Softened butter, 50 grams. Soft brown sugar, 50 grams. Golden syrup, 50 grams. Plain flour, plain flour, 50 grams. Chopped crystallized ginger, 75 grams. You would treat that as optional if you don't like ginger. I haven't got crystallized, so I've just used ordinary and chopped it up and added some honey to it. Tastes good to me. Sliced almonds. Now, once again, um, I had a broken bag of walnuts, so I mixed the almonds and the walnuts. Now then, the dark chocolate, 200 grams, the white chocolate, 65 grams. Just a dipping afterwards, so just take a big lump. Zest of an orange. Didn't have an orange. Add a bit of a lemon. So zested that, put a bit of lemon in, added a bit of honey to that, stirred it all up. Again, give it a lick, pretty good. And what implements do we need? Well, we need a few baking trays and baking paper, please. Um, a mixing bowl, maybe. A medium sized pan, a teaspoon. So we stir in, oh, I'm a cooling rack, a mug, for dipping the chocolate and the oven. Fan 180, no fan 200, gas mark 6. Quite hot. Step in the oil, put the uh, butter and the sugar and the syrup all together in the pan until it all melts. Right, that's it all melted. Just pile all the bits in, stir it all up. Put teaspoon sized dollops of stuff on a grease proof paper on a baking tray, uh, leaving lots of space in between because they're going to spread out. Oh, I love the mess. Now I've um, <clears throat> made another lot. I put cranberries in with the ginger and left the nuts out because I know some lads who don't like nuts. Here's my boy burned. Oh. And guess what? They're sticking to the grease paper. paper. So I've got a suggestion. I put some rice paper underneath them. If you've never come across rice paper, it's brilliant because it's paper that you can eat. Put the little splodges onto rice paper. And then if it gets stuck, 
you can eat the paper, you don't have to peel it off. So here's another idea I had, and I laid, I spread a whole lot of this stuff out in one piece, um, and now it's come out of the oven, I've used a heart shaped cutter and pressed that out, and if it would only come off the paper, we'd have heart shaped Florentines for Florentine's Day. I made a second batch and they worked out much better and the ones that I spread out I've kind of been able to press out and make into Valentine hearts. So here's the little beauties and I think I might give a prize for anybody. Should be lots of you who can do a better job than I've done this week. Bye! Oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. So, if you can make uh, what Alistair made this, this morning, please, please send me in your pictures. And obviously, it's half term. So, you are going to be very happy children. No more school, no more homeschooling. You have a week off to do what you want. So, I want loads of pictures of your bakes what you've baked this week and loads of pictures of what you have been up to. Talking about what we've been up to, should we see what we got up to last week? Because didn't we have fun last week? So should we just take a look at what went on last week? So what was that, Kizzy? Adam. Yay, that's it, correct, well done. Very good. Okay, yeah. now you know it. The I second question. God made me out of Adam's rib. I was the first woman on earth. Who am I? Um, Joshua? Uh, Eve. Eve, yes, well done. Finn? Goliath. Goliath, yes, well done. That was a bonus point. Right, okay, next one. Oh, I did this story. Okay, on Sunday school one time, I lost all my incredible strength when I was tricked by Delilah and she cut off my hair. Who am I? Anyone watching the Sunday School would have seen this. Um, let's see. Isaac and Sam. Samson. Samson, Samson yes, well Very done. Very good. A okay, twin brother called Esau and I tricked him out of his birthright blessing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, close, it's not, it's not, Isaac. It's Esau's twin brother. Isaac, is Dane? Is it Jacob? It is Jacob, yeah. yes, well done. And that was a good Oh, oh yeah. nowhere? Oh, oh, I like that, Sophia. Yeah. Oh, yes. Sophia and James. Well done, Isaac. Oh. Nowhere, what's that? Oh, oh. Ivy! Ivy's got it! No, no, it's not that. Ivy, that is great! Oh, wow. Ivy. Well oh, done, right. Ivy. Okay, let's see. So, Ivy, can you get me something that makes a noise? Something that makes a noise. And I want to hear the noise as well. Something that makes a noise and I want to hear the noise. Oh, well done, Joshua. Well done, Sam. Well done, Sophia. Well done. Oh, oh yes. yes. Oh, oh Ivy, show it. I don't believe. Well done, Ivy. That's great. Oh, wicked. Oh, Ivy. You were so, so good at playing that game. So that is going to be on the first Sunday of every month. So tune in for that too. So let's do competition time. So then Martin, where in the world are you? It's competition time, so where in the world? So I'm going to give you lots of clues and all you have to do is try and guess which country that is. So first clue, this is the country here, right at the bottom. So this is the continent, big continent. If you know where this continent is, you'll know where this country is because this country is at the very south of this continent. There's a clue there. Hmm. So what does the flag look like? 
Well, it's a really cool flag. I mean, check that flag out. Do you recognize that flag? That's a well cool flag. Now I talk capital cities, and normally tell you capital city. Now this country is dead greedy. It's got three capital cities. It's got Cape Town, Pretoria, and Bloemfontein. That's a posh one, Bloemfontein. So three capitals, how greedy is that? Wow. Now, they've got three capitals, and the language I normally tell you how to say hello and count one to five in this language. Well, this country has got 11, 11 official languages of this country. There's got so many different tribes and cultures there. We've got 11. So I'm gonna try and teach you today how to say hello and one to five in one of the languages. And the language I'm picking is Zulu. So in Zulu, they wanna say hello, they say, Saubona, Saubona, Saubona. If they want to count, one to five, they say, Kunye, Kubili, Kutatu, Kune, Kuthlanu. Kunye, Kubili, Kutatu, Kune, Kuthlanu. Whew, I did it, I spoke Zulu, wow. So, um, yes, so like I said to you, they've got lots of different uh, tribes, lots of different cultures, lots of different languages. And because of that, this country's got a nickname. It's called the Rainbow Nation. That's the nickname, the Rainbow Nation. All different types of colours and people and cultures living together. So that's a little fact for you. Uh, it's called the Rainbow Nation. What else can I tell you? Ah, yes. Sport in this country, they play uh, cricket and football a lot, but one of the favourite sports in this country is rugby. And the, the rugby team of this country, it's called the Springboks. So you might have heard that, the Springboks, and it's named after this animal here, this antelope. That can jump really, really high. Can you see that? It's like, wow, it can jump so high. It's called the Springboks, and that's why it's got the name from that. Now the final clue, if you haven't got it already, this country has got lots and lots of amazing animals. So here's just a few of the animals that you can see in this country. A lion, a rhino, a giraffe, and a zebra. So lots of amazing big animals in this country. So have you got it where in the world? Where in the world is Martin. Hmm. If you know the answer, you know what to do. Email me, text me. I said phone me. That's quite hilarious. You can phone me if you want to. Um, and then I will pull your name out of the hat if you get the right answer. Now we have the memory verse challenge and we're going to actually spend about three weeks on each memory verse because I want you to learn these memory verses. So we've got quite long memory verses to learn, but don't worry because we are gonna have three weeks to learn it. And to, to help us learn it, Auntie Jean has put together a really great way of learning our memory verse for this month. And I think um, there is gonna be a little singing in it. Um, and there's going to be uh, talking. It's going to be talking about protection. Uh, the verse is going to be talking about trusting in God. Um, it's a really, really great verse. So, Jean, what is the memory verse for this month? Good morning, everybody. I've got our memory verse for this week. It's from Psalm 91, verses one and two. This is what it says: Whoever goes to the Lord for safety. Whoever remains under the protection of the Almighty can say to him, You are my defender and protector. You are my God, in you I trust. Psalm 91 verses 1 and 2 now let's try it again because it's quite a long couple of verses. Whoever goes to the Lord for safety, whoever remains under the protection of the Almighty, can say to him, you are my defender and protector. 
You are my God, in you I trust. Psalm 91 verse 1 and 2. Now the book of Psalms, which is right in the middle of our Bibles, was actually the song book of the Bible. And many of these Psalms were written to be sung. So I thought we might have a go at singing this to help us remember it. We're going to sing it to the tune of, that some of the little ones particularly might know. It's called Bobbing Up and Down on a Big Green Tractor. So let's try singing it to that tune. Whoever goes to the Lord for safety, whoever remains under the protection of the Almighty, can say to him, you are my defender and protector. You are my God, in you I trust, Psalm 91, verse 1 and 2. Shall we try it again? Whoever goes to the Lord for safety, whoever remains under the protection of the Almighty, can say to him, you are my defender and protector. You are my God, in you I trust. Psalm 91 verses 1 and 2. Well done. See if you can have a go at that for yourselves. Katie would love to hear it if you can and can record it and send it to her. Wasn't that so good, Jean? That was brilliant. That song was great and what a great way to help us learn. So if you can learn um, that song, oh my goodness, in the memory verse, I so want to hear that next week. I so want you to send me in your videos of you singing um, the memory verse. And the memory verse leads us really, really well into our story because our story this morning um, is about the last plague and it's all about trusting in God and it's all about God's protection. And it's been told uh, by the amazing Brown family. Um, so it's going to be a good one. So um, the Brown family, what, what is the story for us this morning? So this was to be the Hebrews' last day in Egypt. Although it should have been a happy day, a lot of people were worried. Moses had said the angel of death would come and kill the firstborn of every Egyptian family. But the people were worried. What if he got it wrong? What if he went into one of their houses by mistake? But with God, there are no mistakes. God told them to slaughter a lamb and sprinkle the blood on the sides and top of the door and the angel would pass over their house. All who believed in God did what they were told, and at sunset that evening, people were asking each other, is the blood sprinkled on your home? But some people did not believe and didn't do what they had been asked to do. They would soon learn God means what he says. So they used all the, those lambs to celebrate the Passover with their families, but they ate in a hurry, all dressed ready to go at a moment's notice. No one slept that night. Then suddenly at midnight, there was a loud weeping and wailing from all the Egyptian homes. The firstborn of every family, even the Pharaoh's son, was dead. This was the last and worst of the ten plagues. Finally, Pharaoh decided to let the Hebrew people go. He called Moses and Aaron in the middle of the night and said, Take all your people and leave Egypt. He told them to take their animals too. He was in that much of a rush to get the Hebrews out of Egypt. He gave them silver and gold and even some clothes to help them on their way. Wow, what a terrible, terrible plague. Well done, the brown boys, for acting that out so, so well. But it really was, wasn't it? It was a really sad um, plague. 
where all of those Egyptian babies died. And it's quite hard, I think, this story. It's quite hard for me and adults to kind of get our head round um, this last plague. And there are so many lessons, kids, that, that we could learn from this story. But I want to just pick out one. And that is God is who he says he is. God does what he says he's going to do. So if we, if we remember all of the plagues, God said they were all going to happen and they did. And we also need to remember to trust in God. And even though Moses' people were really fearful, they had faith in God. They had faith that God would protect them. And he did, didn't he? He protected his people. God is our protector in times of danger. And if you want to read that story again and read around it, which means um, you can read different parts of the Bible and it might give you different lessons, then I really, really encourage you, especially if you're a little bit older, um, to actually read that story again and see what, see what you get out of it. Now, I think it'd be really good um, if we prayed and just really reflected and really thought about um, what we've learned because we've had some really fun times this morning, haven't we, with kitchen chaos and Valentine's Day and competition time um, and what we saw last week. But then it was mixed in with that really sad story. But that really sad story um, obviously had a lot of hope out of it. And it was all about trusting and how God protects us. So if we can remember that this morning, that in our uh, times of, of fearfulness, in our times that we feel like we might be in trouble, that we just need to trust, that we just need to talk to God daily and he will help you through that um, terrible time that you're going through and he will um, protect you. So let's pray but before we pray um as it's half term i want you just to have an absolutely fantastic time um i want you just to forget about school um and just go in the garden if you have a garden go into the park um if you've got a park near by you just do some really fun things and i want to see what you've got up to um in a week's time so everybody do this and everybody do this and everybody do this. So Lord, we just thank you that you are our protector, that you are our comfort in times of need. And we just remember um, the memory verse as well this morning about how you protect us, how you comfort us. And Lord, we just really thank you that we can trust in you, Lord. So I just really pray for the children this week that if they are feeling fearful, if they are feeling scared of anything, if they find themselves in trouble, I just really pray that they will go to you, that they will talk to you and you will um, protect them and they will feel your love. So Lord, I just really pray that we have a fantastic a week and bring us back safe in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you think I've forgotten about news, but I haven't. I thought let's end with news. So let's see what you've all been up to last week. Bye. Have a great week off. Bye.
tumbling, it's tumbling down at your name, Jesus. Can you clap seven times for me? And count. We'll do it together, yeah? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well done. Yay. Well done.